Who scheduled this weather? On a cold and blustery March morning on Maryland's Assateague Island, DNR Regional Ecologist Dave Brinker scans the dune tops and scrub sand, searching for an Arctic visitor. They're going to be sitting out here. They might be sitting in the lee of a dune or uh, uh, on top of a dune. The goal is to catch and then attach a transmitter to one of the many snowy owls wintering on Assateague. There he is, right there on top of a dune, just like he's supposed to be. And that's a really good place for uh, trapping. You know, we'll put the net out here in this flat area where he can see it. The owls are here, thousands of miles south of their natural hunting grounds, because of a breeding anomaly called an eruption. Now, hopefully this does not flush it. The snowy owls of the Canadian Arctic laid more eggs than usual last year to take advantage of a lemming baby boom. There were lemmings everywhere over a large geographic area, so you had this massive breeding event and you have more snowy owls than we've seen in many years. And that means they need a fair amount of space to find enough food for all of them. And that's really the only reason they came south. During the tail end of 2013, an unusually large number of public snowy owl sightings were suddenly recorded in the social media and in the news. People were surprised to see such an unfamiliar and beautiful bird. The owls were spotted in locations ranging from the upper Midwest and the Northeast to here on Assateague, on the edge of the Atlantic, where the southernmost snowy was seen. Brinker and his colleagues knew the size of this migration was rare, and it offered an excellent opportunity to study and trap the birds. Trapping a savvy raptor like the snowy calls for some mechanical cunning. A pigeon acts as a live lure for the owl, using them as a practice that biologists only employ when it is absolutely necessary to capture a species for study. So here, Brinker has set a spring tension trap that he hopes will close shut on the owl when it comes near. The tethered pigeon is encased in an armor of thick leather that keeps him from flying and protects his body from the snowy's sharp talons. Patience is the watchword when trapping owls, but luck isn't far behind. From now on, we're real. Keep your eye on that owl. Dave waits. Then finally, there's movement toward the trap. I think he wants it. It's just a matter of time. Time. Something Brinker is used to waiting out. Get bold. Unexpectedly, the snowy gets flushed from its perch. Oh, that's why the dark one showed up. There's a big female sitting on the post behind the white there. That's why that little male left. We didn't see that bird today. The male took off, and the large female isn't interested in getting caught tonight. Losing light, Dave will have to try again another day. The snowy owl's migration to Maryland gives Dave Brinker a chance to study this seldom seen bird up close in the wild. But with no bird in hand, Dave looks for what they may have left behind. Oh, cool. Nice big pellet full of waterfowl feathers. So this bird was eating good last night. Dave's found the indigestible, coughed up remains of an owl's previous night's meal. And uh, it's a great way to study the uh, food that they're eating. A pellet of feather and bones from a duck dinner. This is a big pellet. Big old big pellet. The snowy owl's appearance in Maryland surprised a few folks. Well, the first time that I saw it, I was fishing. And I happened to turn around and see this white bird sitting on the dune. And I'm like, what the heck is that? 
For local photographer Alan Sklar, it was the chance of a lifetime. Owls are just something that you don't see. So seeing this huge bird out here on the beach in the daytime, and it allows you to get close enough at least to get a photograph, it's just awesome. Snowy owls are charismatic. People like them. That's one of the things that makes Project Snowstorm cool. Project Snowstorm is a website created to share snowy owl information and to track migration. When we track these birds, we're trying to figure out how they use the different habitats. Um, what are the kind of habitats that they require to make it through a full winter uh, so they can go back to the Arctic? One of the owls tracked is codenamed Assateague. Assateague is sort of our star owl in some ways because it was the first owl that was banded in Maryland. Visitors can track the owls all the way back to the Canadian Arctic. Dave's hoping to add more birds to Project Snowstorm. A few days later, he gets another shot. This morning, one of the volunteers that helps us had one uh, down the island, and there's probably more. Soon, Dave spots a good candidate. He's looking into the sun of all places. Yeah. That might be our bird. With spring just around the corner, it won't be long before these owls return to the Arctic. For Dave, it's now or never. It's all up to the owl now. It's facing the ocean, but it keeps looking back towards the shrub zone. It's got to turn its head around and look towards the ocean. It's looking at something. It's got its neck up real high. It's looking in the right direction. Here it comes. After the snowy flies toward the pigeon, Dave activates the trap with his radio remote. We got him. He is just a matter of waiting. This is not a job for a type A person. I know, guy. You're little. This is 400. In a nearby park service cabin, Dave and a colleague take measurements. 385. The size of the owl presents a problem. We're being real careful with the birds that we put transmitters on. We want them to be in good health, relatively uh, large size. And this one's right on the edge, just a little bit too small for us to put a transmitter on. Instead, a traditional leg band will allow researchers to keep tabs on this snowy. Yeah, you are now wed to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service for the rest of your life. Close to the spot where the snowy was trapped, Dave is now ready to release the owl into the night. You're ready to go, aren't you? Okay, young man. Time to go back to the north. Live long and prosper. I will never see an eruption of this magnitude again in my life. It's a, a once-in-a-lifetime experience. 